I'm Gary Bemidge. This is another of my cruising tips for travelers. I'm getting asked a lot about cruising and 2020. The three key questions I'm being asked is, first of all, I have a final balance looming for a cruise in 2020. What should I do? Should I pay it? Secondly, I have a cruise for later in 2020. Should I cancel it now, move it right now? Or thirdly, I really want to get back to cruising and I'm thinking of booking a cruise. Should I book it or not? First of all, there's four critical things that you should bear in mind if you are thinking of cruising or you have a booking. And these are really, really important. First of all, no one knows when mainstream cruising is going to reopen. No matter what cruise lines have on sale, no matter what people might think, the reality is nobody actually knows the exact date for cruising to return on a big scale. All of the CEOs of the major cruise lines, so Royal Caribbean, Carnival Corporation, and Norwegian Cruise Lines all admit they do not know. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control in the United States, which will decide when cruising can start for any cruises that are coming in and out of US ports, have even in the last 10 days issued a statement saying they do not know when the situation is going to be ready for cruising to return. We're seeing some small pockets beginning, very regional. So we're seeing just right now in Norway, we're seeing some early cruises for Norwegian passengers to Norwegian ports. We're seeing some river cruising tentatively starting again, very local for local people. The second key thing to bear in mind as you make these decisions is nobody knows what the final protocols are going to be. What we're seeing is some early indications of protocols. We've got some indications of what they like to be. So we're seeing, generally speaking, fewer passengers on board. We're seeing much more screening, some requiring testing. So, for example, Ponant have issued their protocols as they start taking bookings and are allowed to reopen in Tahiti with their Paul Gargan brand. You're going to have to do a COVID-19 test before you head off for that cruise. We're seeing more temperature screening. We're seeing venues on board are going to be restricted the number of people that can be there at any one time. We're seeing enhanced cleaning procedures. We're seeing changes to dining. So for example, there'll be no self-service dining in many cases. It will be served in some form or fashion. We're also seeing much higher level of medical facilities, equipment on board. We also don't know how many ships will be sailing. So all the cruise lines have made it clear that they will phase back ships. So as you look at an itinerary, as you look at bookings ahead, bear in mind that even if you've got a booking, that may not actually be one of those that is included in the phase rollout. We also don't know what ports are going to be open and what itineraries are going to be open. So again, all the cruise lines are saying they're expecting when they start, they're not going to be able to run the schedules as planned because it's going to be very dependent on what ports are open. So bearing all those uncertainties in mind, what should you be doing about 2020 and cruising. So let's take a look at the first one. You've got a cruise book and a final balance is looming, which of course could be many thousands of dollars or euros or pounds or whatever. You probably do not want to pay it until you are 100% sure and the cruise lines are clear about what cruises are going to be running because you could be handing over many thousands of dollars to a cruise line which then cancels the cruise and then you have to go through the whole process of trying to get that back with its future cruise credits or in some cases waiting up to 90 days to get your money back. So for example, I have a big Antarctica cruise later in the year in November. The final payment is due towards the end of July. It's a lot of money and unless I know absolutely it's signed off and it's going to go, I think I will not pay the balance and look at scheduling and taking advantage of the flexibility that cruise lines are allowing to move bookings without penalty. Ask yourself, do I really want to hand over money for a cruise that I absolutely at this point in time do not know is going to go? What happens if you've got a booking for later in the year and the final balance is still some time away? A lot of people ask me, should they cancel that because they either not sure they want to go, or they're not sure if the cruise is going to go. My advice is hold on to that booking and wait until the cruise line cancels. The reason for that is pretty simple. If the cruise line cancels, you normally have an option of a cash refund which could be important to you if you want to build in flexibility, or they give you some kind of bonus because they've canceled the cruise. So 25% seems to be more of the norm. Hold your nerve and wait until the cruise line cancels. So I've done that with many of the cruises that I've had, even though they're quite far out. I've waited until the cruise line cancels because I can then get my cash back, which I'm tending to do a lot because it gives more flexibility and I had lots of cruises. What if you really want to go cruising and you're eager to book 2020? There's lots and lots of deals out there for 2020. I would strongly advise against making a booking for 2020 again until the cruise lines have got sign off and you know exactly that the cruises are going to go. Importantly, as I said at the beginning there, because you also will know what cruises are going. So for example, we're seeing just starting up right now, Sea Dream starting sailing in Norway for Norwegian guests. 
that was never on the schedule. It's now in place, they got sign off, it went on sale and people could then book that with confidence knowing that it's happening. A lot of people jumped on the bandwagon when they saw the no sale order in the US ending at the end of July. They booked cruises in August. And in fact, the, yesterday, the day before I recorded this, Norwegian Cruise Line canceled all of their August bookings. So lots of people who piled in and booked cruises in August have now paid deposits and the cruise line is sitting on the money and they have no cruise. So I would really absolutely strongly wait until cruises start up and you know what the protocols are, you know exactly what cruises are, what ships there are and what sort of deal you can get. You might find the protocols that are part of that whole process you don't like. So there's a whole bunch of different requirements and protocols that will be put in place and you may decide actually I don't want to do those. If you've booked the cruise and then these protocols comes in place and you don't like, you are then locked into a cruise you may not want to do. The other thing that's really important as you think about cruising is you need to understand what your government restrictions are. So for example, in the UK, which is where I'm based at the moment, the government has a no non-essential travel ban. The US aren't even letting UK and EU people in at the moment. At the moment, there's a 14 day quarantine when you return. So you need to also be aware that the whole quarantining regulations, borders opening, is a constantly fluid situation. So you need to wait until those are lifted. It's absolutely clear. And until things are signed off and agreed, you really need to be absolutely cautious and wait. Once it's all go, 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 that's the time to jump in and get things going. I have loads more videos packed full of cruising tips and advice. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?